welcome to the Sunday evening service tonight. Glad that you've joined in. I want to wish a happy birthday to Miss Lydia De Leon. And a happy birthday to you, Miss Lydia. Trust you have a wonderful day. Uh, also want to introduce our preacher tonight. Our preacher this evening is Brother Chris Reed. Uh, Chris and his wife, uh, Rebecca, were with us several years ago. Uh, 2015, I believe it was. And so uh, he's uh, one of our younger missionaries out, out in Thailand. And we certainly do appreciate uh, their fervency and faithfulness uh, for the Lord. Uh, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. And after I pray, Brother Reed will preach to us this evening. Lord Jesus, we thank you for uh, our, our church. We thank you for speaking to our hearts in the morning services today. And now we come again to you this evening as a people in need. We thank you for Brother Reed and for his life and ministry. Lord, how he surrendered to you for the call to preach after being in a vocation for some time. I went to college and prepared and is now out on the field reaping the harvest for your sake and for your glory. I ask that you would just use him tonight to work in our hearts and stir our souls for the gospel and the spreading of the gospel and to be faithful to the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, Seattle Baptist Church. This is Chris Reed, your missionary in Thailand. Hello, Pastor Cox and church family. I'm glad I have this opportunity to give you an update and to share um, a Bible message with you. Currently, we are back in the States. We arrived back here in August, and we were able to come back and spend some time with some family. My wife's grandfather was sick with cancer, and he has since passed away, but we were able to spend some time with him just before that. And so now we're traveling around, giving reports, giving updates to the churches that support us, and we're excited to be able to send you this video. In Thailand, this past few years, we've been serving at the non Baptist Church, and in that ministry, we were teaching English, as well as preaching the Bible in the institute, the church, um, and, usually, and using English as a tool to uh, build relationships with the people in the community. We would do that in the public schools. We'd also do that in the prisons, and it's exciting to see God use something like that to where we can then open the Bible, give them a message, and see their hearts change and respond to the Word of God. And so in that ministry, it's been exciting because I've also traveled up to Hill Tribe Villages, and I've been able to teach in their Bible Institutes, just help train and disciple the pastors up there in the northern part of Thailand. And Thailand is unique. It has ministries there in the city, as well as ministries up in the Hill Tribe Villages with just a handful of people. And seeing God work and bless in those churches has been exciting. We've had baptism services in the in the river, by the waterfall, um, we've been able to see God really work and bless in those ministries. One of the exciting things is this last year, um, we've been able to see a new church started outside the city of Udon Thani. A man that we, has been saved and, and uh, discipled in the ministry there in Nong Long that we were serving at, um, we were able to just work with him a little bit more and encourage him and help him move to a city about 10 hours from us to the city of Udon Thani and start a church. They were outside the city, they started under a tree, just he and his family, another couple, and they've been able to see um, people saved and discipled and the church growing. This past year, they've been able to build a building now, and they're really developing the property there. And so we're excited about what God is doing there outside the city of Udon Thani. Um, it's up in the northern part of Thailand, just close to the border of Laos. And then we're praying that God can use that ministry even to reach into the country of Laos, or even have pastors or Christian workers from Laos come down into Thailand and be, and be trained and helped and, uh, and discipled and just encouraged as well. And so pray for that ministry with, with Pastor Gowit in Udon Thani and that God would continue to bless and we'd be able to see um, fruit um, there in that ministry. So thank you for your continued prayer and your support. We have turned that ministry that we were serving at over to a Thai pastor. Um, pastor Boy um, is now going to be taking that ministry, and we're excited about what God has for him there in Nong Long. We now, when we return to Thailand, will be going to the city of Lampoon and helping with the church plant. We'll continue in the schools, the public schools, and the jail, and, and, uh, 
and ministries like that, as well as teaching in a Bible institute, um, praying that we can turn that institute into actual college and really have online courses and stuff like that so people can um, be trained and in, in doctrine and theology through even remotely serve in their church, but also receive the training online. So pray with us about that. This, the, the church plant in Lampoon, Sila Baptist Church, as well as a Bible Institute there that we can develop that into a, a college. We are um, planning to be here in the States until December. We were returning, planning to return to Thailand. However, due to COVID, our flights have been canceled. So if you would pray for um, our flight um, back to Thailand, and we're praying that we can return um, in December if we have to wait until after Christmas. Um, but pray for us in, in that area that we can return and, and the borders would be opened up right now because of COVID. Really, it's really strict and really hard to return into that country. So pray for that as well. And pray for Go Wit and that ministry in Udon Tani. And pray as we travel around um, uh, with updates and we have many miles more to travel around the states. And so we appreciate your, prayer, your prayers for our safety. And so once again, I'm glad I can be here uh, with you um, um, and give you this update. If you would... Take your Bibles and open to the book of Philemon. Philemon is a small book there in the New Testament. And, um, you know, Philemon was a, we believe that he received Christ through the ministry of Paul. Um, he heard the message of the gospel and was saved. And now he has a church in his home. And there's um, uh, people that are now being saved and discipled in the home here in, in Philemon's home. Paul is writing this letter to Philemon, and he's writing it in the, for the purpose of, of interceding for a man named Onesimus. Onesimus, uh, we believe, was a servant of Philemon who uh, ran away, um, possibly stole some money or something from Philemon and uh, ran away. But while he was running, uh, Onesimus, the servant, um, he met Paul, and Paul obviously... Um, shared the gospel with him, and uh, Onesimus was saved, and now he has, his life has been changed, and Paul is now sending Onesimus back to Philemon to restore that relationship, and you can really learn a lot in this little book of Philemon, and so as we begin here in the book of Philemon, and Paul, I want to I want to just uh, uh, start in, in verse one and just read a few verses, and then we're going to pull some thoughts out of here, so Verse number one, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, under Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. So here Paul wants to share with them his prayer request. He first thanks God for them, for the believers there in Philemon's house, for Philemon, who is allowing the church to meet in his house, and for their fellowship, for their work together as fellow laborers with Paul. And he says, I'm always making mention of you in my prayers. Then he goes on to say, verse 5, hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus Christ and toward all the saints. So here, Paul says, Wherever I go, I'm, I'm hearing about your love and your faith. Paul was excited and encouraged by the love and the faith that was being shown and displayed by these believers here in, 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 in Philemon's house. And so it's exciting that Paul was pr uh, praying for them and hearing about their faith, hearing about their love, excited to see their, their growth and the fruit that was starting to develop in their life, the fruits of the Spirit that were evident and displayed in the believer's life, and Paul is continually praying for them. But then here in verse 6, Paul goes on to say that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Think with me about that in verse 6. Paul says, my prayer, I'm thanking God for you. I hear about your love. I hear about your faith. And my prayer is now that the communication of your faith may become effectual. So Paul wants that when they communicate their faith, they're, whether they're, they're, they're preaching the gospel, they're witnessing to their neighbors, the people that live around them, their coworkers, when they communicate about their faith, when they talk to people about their faith, 
when their lifestyle is displaying the faith they have in Jesus Christ. This faith that they are now showing forth to the people around them, Paul is saying that I want that faith, when it's communicated, to become effectual. We want it to have an effect. We want it to make a difference in people's lives. We don't want to just um, go through the emotions of, of being a Christian or going to church or saying we believe, but we want what we believe and what we communicate to actually affect with the people around us, to have an effect when we speak it or when we display it, when we show it, that our faith has an effect. And, Paul, and Paul says that it will have an effect. It will become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. You see, when we understand all that's in us in Christ Jesus, all that we have received, there will be a difference in our face, there will be a difference in our life, there will be a difference in the way we communicate. We would communicate more boldly. We would communicate with confidence. We would communicate our faith and what we believe um, to our friends and to our family. We would, um, it would show in our face, it would show in our life when we truly understand all that we have received in Christ Jesus. And that's what I want us to think about together for the next few moments. What have we received in Christ Jesus? As a reminder that we would remember and continually to re, um, um, remind ourselves all that we have received in Christ Jesus. Because when we continually remind ourselves, it changes the way we communicate our faith. It changes the way you witness to your friends. It'll change the way you live your life um, in, 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 in this world. When you understand what you have in Christ, your, the, the communication of your faith becomes more effectual. And that's what Paul's prayer was for them. And so let's think about this. I'm just going to point out three, three things that we have in Christ, that we have received in Christ. When you have accepted Christ, when you heard the gospel, that death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ, and you know now that Jesus Christ died in your place, you, he has taken your sin upon him, that you have now received salvation, and all that, that, and all that, and that entails, all that goes with that, your home in heaven, the fact that we now have Christ in our life, we are in Christ, what are some of the things we have in Christ? Well, first I want us to point out and think about this, we are acquitted from our sin and shame. We have in Christ been acquitted from our sin and shame. Now look with me over at the book of Romans. In the, in the book of Romans, in chapter number 5, in verse number 1, in Romans 5, 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when we have now received Christ in Christ. The Bible there just um, tells us that we have been justified. We have been declared righteous. Though we are all sinners and have fallen short of God's glory, we have all sinned, and, uh, and there's no denying that. There's no getting around that. The Bible is clear, for all have sinned and come short of God's glory. Whether it be a little lie, a big lie, whether it be uh, uh, thoughts we've had, every human being that is living on this earth has sinned and come short of God's glory. But in Christ, we have received justification. We have been acquitted from our sin and shame. You know, when, when, uh, when we have been declared justified, the fact that we now have peace with God, the fact that we now uh, no longer have to worry about the judgment of God. We no longer have to worry about where we are going to spend eternity. We have been justified. We have been declared righteous. In, in, in Romans chapter 6, over there in verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The fact that we have sinned and come short of God's glory, but now Jesus took our sin upon himself. He has taken our place. We now can receive his righteousness. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, at the end there, it says that he was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The fact that we now have been declared justified, we are now righteous, we are no longer um, afraid of, us, of our sin or being the consequences of our sin, the condemnation of our sin, or the shame that comes with sin. You know, in Thailand, they, uh, it's a, in the Eastern mindset, there's an honor-shame culture. 
And the worst thing is to receive shame. When you are shaming your family or shaming your name, the, um, uh, the, the, the depression or the feeling that comes along with that, the emotional um, uh, uh, deep um, feeling when people feel ashamed for what they've done, um, they're trying to cover that shame. Um, they're trying to cover that shame by maybe uh, doing good things. They'll go to the temple. They will light incense. They'll do prayers. They'll give gifts to the monk. All to try to cover a shame as maybe something they've done. Or they've had to leave their family and be away because of the shame maybe they've caused. But you know, in Christ, our shame is gone. He's taken that from us. He became sin. For us, he became, he took our sin upon him. We do not have to hold on to shame anymore. In the Buddhist uh, religion, in the Buddhist mindset, there's no way to cover their shame. It's a continually effort of every day thinking, did I do enough to cover shame? Did I do enough to cover my sin? But in Christ, we are acquitted. We are now forgiven, justified, and our shame has been removed. Man, I'll tell you what, it's exciting to be able to tell that with a, a Thai person, a, a Buddhist who um, has never really heard how their sins can be covered. And it's hard for them to understand that. It is hard to think that we can now have our sin taken away, that we can now receive justification through Christ and what that means. And, and now we can be declared righteous by him. And our sin, our shame is gone. But when they understand that, when they and when it clicks, man, you can see the difference in their face. You can see the difference in their eyes because they know that their sin and their shame is gone. And they are now justified, forgiven, taken away. Their life is changed. They are saved. It changes. The way you communicate your faith when you understand what you have in Christ. It changes the way you will show um, to people around you when you understand what you have received in Christ. And that our sin, are we been acquitted from our sin and shame? I'll tell you what, when I was 17, a Sunday night is when I finally understood that I was a sinner and needed salvation. Yeah, I thought I was good enough. I thought I, I did enough good things. I thought I was a good son and a good person. But when I understood that I, I was a sinner on my way to hell, it clicked with me. And I knew that if I died, I'd go to hell. And I knew that if I didn't accept Christ, the only way to heaven was through Jesus. It just clicked. And I understood that. And I went forward. And I'll tell you what, when I prayed and accepted Christ as my Savior, the burden was lifted. That burden of sin, the guilt of shame, the, the sin, the, the shame I felt of my sin, it was gone. I had been declared righteous at that moment in time, given eternal life. I received that gift of eternal life, not through anything I did, but through what Christ did for me. And I, became, I was in Christ at that moment, in Christ, and received that forgiveness. That's what we have. That's what we need to communicate. That's what we want to share with people. But not only do um, we see that we've been acquitted from our sin and shame, but I also want you to look at Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 6. There's so much good in Ephesians chapter 1, but I'm just going to point out here verse number 6. It says this, To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. You see, we've been acquitted from our sin and shame, but we've also been accepted in the beloved. Think about that. Accepted in the beloved. We have now been brought into God's family. We are accepted. Man, I understand, if we could really understand what that means, if we could really understand and grasp the concept of being accepted by God, we are, as humans, always try to strive for acceptance. We, we want to be accepted. We want to be accepted by our friends. We want to be accepted in certain groups. Um, we are always wanting and longing for acceptance. Accepted by our friends, you know, accepted, um, you know, uh, in, in different relationships. Um, accepted in maybe activities that we love, like to do. Um, we like to achieve success and be accepted by those around us. And, and that's always something we strive for. It's something that's inside of us. But if you think with me that Ephesians 6, when we now are in Christ, when we now have received salvation, we have been accepted into the blood. That's amazing. I love the fact that God has shown us mercy. 
Mercy in the fact that we have received forgiveness. Mercy is not receiving what we deserve. We deserve hell, we deserve judgment, but we have received mercy through Christ. Mercy. But not only have we received mercy, we have received grace. Grace is getting something you don't deserve. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. And God's grace is shown to us through here. In Ephesians 6, he says, except by his the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. You are accepted. Accepted. You don't have to strive for human acceptance. You don't have to strive to be accepted by the maybe the, 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 the parent that you don't have that good of a relationship with. You know, I, uh, as a father of um, four now, um, Ethan is our oldest. We have our daughter, Selah, is five. Ethan is seven. Um, our son, Ryder, is three. And we have a son, Asher, um, who's nine months old. And, uh, and so I, I love all of my children. Um, each one is different and unique and have different personalities, but I love them all. And uh, Ethan, our oldest, He's always looking for my acceptance. Like, he wants to do something. He wants to see if dad saw that. Did dad see what I did? You know, dad, look at what I did here. Oh, hey, watch this. Look what I can do here. You know, whether it's in some kind of sports, whether we play baseball or basketball or something, he, he wants to be accepted by me. And I, and I have to be careful, and I want to make sure I show that acceptance and show my love to them. And, and, and as a child, many times we seek the acceptance or approval of our father. And we're always trying to strive for that. And maybe you here, maybe you here um, today are, are also longing for acceptance from a parent. Longing or afraid to do something that you want to do. You're doing what, what you do because you want acceptance. You don't have to worry anymore. You don't have to worry about trying to be accepted um, in, in, in a human sense. We, we love that. We long for that. But can I tell you? You are accepted by God. You have been accepted in the beloved. In Jesus, you are accepted. I'll tell you, man, it's, it makes me excited to know that we have received, that we are accepted. We are accepted into the beloved. I, I think of um, the parable that Jesus gave of the son who left his father's house. He asked for the, for the inheritance that he was to receive, pretty much telling his dad, I, I, I wish you were dead. Um, I want the money, and, and I want to go do what I want. And we know the story. The father gave him his money, gave him his inheritance. He left. He, he spent it all. He lived a, a wicked lifestyle. And the friends that he had, he thought he had were friends, that he thought he had acceptance. Um, but he, when his money was gone, his friends were gone. He ended up in feeding pigs. But then the Bible says Jesus explained how he came to his senses and understood that, you know what, I'll just go back to my father's house. I will be a servant there. And that's, and, 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 that's, and that's better than what I'm doing here. My father's got food. He's got uh, a place I can stay in the, in the servant's quarters. And I'll just go back and be a servant. But then as he was uh, still a long ways off, the Bible says that his father saw him. And his father, against culture, against the, the normal accepted behavior, his father ran to his son. Ran to his son in the middle of the city there in the village accepted his son, put his arms around him, hugged him, and then walked back, covering the shame that he might have felt. The son, with all the neighbors and people around, the villagers, they knew what that son did, and they knew that that son caused shame to his family, but his dad covered him, and his dad brought him back to the house, and his dad then put a new robe on him and put the ring on his finger and said, you are now my son that has, been re that has returned. He was excited and threw the party for him and, and, and had a feast, because he accepted him. He covered his shame and accepted him. And listen, that's what we have received in Christ. When we communicate our faith, we want to make sure that we understand in Christ, we have received forgiveness. In Christ, we have received acceptance. We are accepted in the beloved. So important for us to understand that we have been accepted into the beloved. Now, stop trying to, uh, don't worry about striving for um, acceptance in this world. Whatever acceptance we might think we might achieve or gain, it, it's short-lived. It passes quickly. Just rest 
in the fact that you are accepted in the beloved. When you serve God, you are accepted in the beloved. When you communicate the, your faith to people, knowing you are accepted in the beloved, and you communicate to them in such a way that help them understand how they can be accepted, they can receive forgiveness and be accepted into the beloved as well. That, it, when we understand what Paul is talking here in, in the book of Ephesians, it'll change the way we um, uh, witness, it'll change the way we communicate our faith. And so, not only do I want us to point out, oh, not only tonight that I, uh, that I want us to look at um, in Christ, we have received forgiveness, uh, acquitted from our sin, we have been accepted in the beloved. But finally, I want you to think with me on this, that we are anticipating his return. You know, there's a lot of crazy things that are going on today in this world. There are a lot of things that we don't know exactly how everything's going to um, play out. You know, this, this is a, a very unique and interesting time, and times seem to be changing very quickly all around us. But as a Christian, in Christ, as a believer, as, a, as one who our faith is not in, in, in religion, not in society, not in politics, not in a particular um, a group, our faith is in Christ. In Christ, we are anticipating his return. It doesn't matter what happens around us. Jesus is coming back. He is returning. It might be tonight. It might be tomorrow. It might be this year. We don't know, but we are anticipating his return. Uh, look with me over at the, the book of Titus. In Titus, in chapter number 2, um, it says this. In, uh, I'll just start reading verse, verse 11, but I want to point out verse 13. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that we might be, that, that, that he might uh, redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. It's amazing there in verse 13 that I want to focus on is that the fact that we, that have received God's grace, that are now um, um, uh, being uh, growing in our walk with him, growing in our faith, that he is now changing us and molding us into what he wants us to be, that we now are allowing God's word to um, change our lives, to sanctify us, to have a difference on the outside, have a difference from the inside to the outside. But we, in verse 13, says that are looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the book of Hebrews, it tells us about hope. Hope is an anchor that keeps us anchored in our belief, in our faith, in our the hope of eternal life. Hope, and sometimes we can use it as it might happen. I hope that'll happen. I hope nothing bad. You know, maybe, uh, maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. We don't know. It's just, you know, it's what we hope for. But the word hope in the Bible is not that way. Hope is assurance. Hope is, a, is, is what keeps us um, anchored into our faith and what we believe. And we are looking for that blessed hope. What's the blessed hope? The glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's a day that the trump will sound, that Christ will come back, that we who are alive here will meet him in the air. There are times when we are either going to meet him by uh, death here on earth, where, 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 um, where we might um, um, you know, die someday, or we are going to meet him in the air when he comes again. There's hope. Hope in that. You know, when we, when we look over at a couple of verses there uh, in Thessalonians, and if, and if you look over um, in the book of 1 Thessalonians, and verse number 4, I mean chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, and meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. There, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 
The words that Paul was writing into the church of uh, Thessalonica, he was writing them uh, words of hope, words of comfort, because we have hope in Christ. I don't know what you're going through tonight. I don't know what you're going through or maybe what you've experienced this past year. There's a lot of people that have gone through hurt and sorrow um, this past year. And like I mentioned earlier, my wife's grandfather passed away um, about a month ago. And he was battling cancer and he has since passed away. But we have hope he's in heaven. He had trusted Christ as his Savior many years ago. And though we might be sad because of the loss, we are excited that he is now in heaven with the Lord. The hope of eternal life. We don't have to be depressed. We don't have to be sorrowful. We can have hope because we are know there's a heaven. We are looking forward to Christ's return. The hope of heaven. You know, when Paul was writing to Philemon, and he said, my prayer is that the commun of your, communication of your faith may become effectual by acknowledging of every good thing you have in Christ Jesus. You see, when we take a step back sometimes, we, we can get surrounded by our circumstances and all the things that are happening around us, and we can focus on them, and we can get our eyes off Christ. But when we step back and say, what do I have in Christ? And we remind ourselves that we are acquitted from our sin and shame. We remind ourselves that we are accepted in the beloved. When we remind ourselves that we have, are anticipating his return, I'll tell you what, it'll change your perspective on your day. When you go out this next week and you are reminded of what you have in Christ, the communication of your faith through your actions, through your behavior, through the words that you um, speak, you, when you're witnessing to people around you, when you're um, 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 preaching the gospel, when you're speaking the gospel, when you're telling people about your faith, it'll change. It'll change you. It will change the way you communicate it and the urgency there is in communicating our faith. And there will be an effect on, on, the, on the people around you. It will have an effect when we think about what we have in Christ and then when we communicate that to others. There will be an effect. There will be a change. That was Paul's prayer for Philemon. I, want it, I, I hear about your love. I hear about your faith. But my prayer is that when you communicate that, this is what Paul is telling Philemon. When you communicate that your faith, man, I want there to be an effect. I want it to have a working, I want there to be a power working through you. A power that's working in you that is accomplishing um, um, God's work, that is accomplishing uh, fruit in other people's lives, that they are responding in faith as well to what the Bible says. God has given us a great work to be a part of his ministry. We are working together with him. This is not something we do alone. But he has given us those tools. He, in Christ, we have received um, so much. And there's so much more we could go through. And there's only, out of only three, three different things that we received in Christ. But I, I understand that this work is not done alone. We have, in Christ, the power of God working through us. Ephesians 3.20 is a verse I love to quote. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. God's power is evident in your life. God, in Christ, you have the power of God in you. You have been forgiven. You are accepted. And we are anticipating his return. We're looking for that blessed hope. That will change the way you communicate your faith. I, I enjoy this opportunity that I could have with you to um, this, with this Bible lesson. I hope it was a blessing. My prayer is that as your church continues to reach forward, reach out, sharing the gospel, uh, supporting missionaries, that your church, that people all over will know the love and faith that your church has. But your church, the church is made up of each one of you. And when you go out individually and communicate your faith, think about what you have in Christ. Think about what Christ has given you. And I know there'll be an effect. And so thank you, Seattle Baptist Church. Thank you for the time I've had with you. Thank you, Pastor Cox, for allowing me this time. And, uh, and thank you for your, your love for us, your continued prayer and support, and your heart for missions. So God bless.